This tutorial focuses on working with text in Adobe Illustrator CS 5.1. So we're going to start off by looking at the two different types of text that you can create in Illustrator. And the first one is what's called point type. The second one is called area type. We're going to look at both of these in a little bit more detail so you can see the differences and similarities between them. So point text or point type and area text or area type um, point type is when you uh, want to use um, small bursts of text, for example, for logo types or for headings um, and so on. And area type is basically for large blocks of text, so um, an, a full article or body text in a website page, for example. So let's just have a look at point type first. If we open up a new document, and select the type tool from the toolbar and then click anywhere on the artboard and let go. So just click once and let go and you're going to get a point which is a point type and a flashing cursor. So from here you can start to type in your text. I'm going to type in the word mission and then I'm going to switch back to my selection arrow tool. I'm going to zoom in on the word and go to the view menu and choose hide bounding box. So it's, it is called point type because of the anchor point at the start of the text, which we can see here. And the type will always align itself to this anchor point. So if we choose align center or align right, for example, in the paragraph styling of the text, the anchor point stays the same, but the text itself moves in relation to the point. If we select back on the text tool or press T on the keyboard and then click back into the text, at the actual text that we typed. I'm going to add some more text to this. So if I type the word accomplished uh, and then keep on typing just random letters, what we're going to see is that with point type it will continue on into infinity on the same line. The only way to break that line is to press enter or return. So the text is free. You can move it around. It's very easy to manipulate and control and put into your layout in various forms. Point type, as I said, is best for um, logos, um, short bursts of text, headings, and so on. It's quite design friendly and very useful for laying out text as an object in your file, and also if you wanted to export text as a graphic to use in your web design. The second type of text we're going to look at here is area type text. So area type is for larger blocks of text, articles, um, columns, and so on. And we'll have a look at how this works. If we open up a, a new document in Illustrator and select the type tool, and this time we're going to just compare between the two types. We can click once and we can use the point tool. I'm just going to undo that. And then if I click and drag this time, so instead of clicking and letting go, we're clicking and dragging to create a text box or a text frame. Um, you can make the text frame any size that you want and then once you've let go of your mouse button you can type inside the frame and this is area type so it's got text flow it means once it reaches reaches the edge of the text frame it's going to skip down onto the next line depending on the size of the box and if you're on if you have the text tool selected and hold down the control key on the keyboard you can then see some handles appearing around the edge of your text frame which allow you to resize and manipulate the amount of um, text that can fit inside the box or that can be visible. Area type is not as easily movable as point type but it's better for more text if you're working with larger blocks of text. Okay let's go to the type menu and choose area type options. In here you can actually have advanced control over things like the width and the height of the text frame. Also very useful, you can increase or decrease the number of columns um, if you're working with a, something similar to a magazine layout um, or even a web page. And you can adjust the offset uh, amounts so how close or far away from the edge of your text frame the text appears. So you've got lots of different options here. Um, boxes on the upper left and the bottom right of our text frame are called import and outport text. So this is when 
text enters from one side of the frame and exits from the other. Like if you had one column of text and you wanted it to continue in the next column, then you could do, do a, um, an outport from one of the text frames and import into the next text frame and, and the text will flow freely between the two frames. So just to demonstrate this, let's click with the arrow selection tool on the outport of our text box and then create a new text frame that will be connected to the first one and the text will flow into each other. You can control text anti-aliasing as well. So if we open the file monthlyspecials.ai, we've got four options for anti-aliasing in the character panel. So we're going to have a quick look at the character panel now. So go to window, type character, or just open it from your sub toolbar on the right. And the anti-aliasing options here are none, crisp, sharp, and strong. There is no one best setting for any particular situation because it, each situation is different and it depends on the size of the text, the font that you've used, the color, and so on, and the shape of the font. So you've got to experiment with each of these to find the best setting for your chosen font and color and size. Um, if you go to File, Save for Web, and then under the Image Size tab, you've got this uh, tick box here, to, or drop down to select Type Optimized. So if you're exporting text from Illustrator as an image or as a graphic, this is what you can do, optimize the type, and uh, it will display at its best for you in your design. Okay, let's have a quick look at um, what you can do in terms of text. Uh, in Illustrator when exporting to Dreamweaver. So you're going to eventually end up using CSS to style your layout in Dreamweaver. So you can simulate the CSS box model in Illustrator and we're just going to do that right now. So just by creating three simple boxes, um, an internal one, and I'll just make that light gray, a border, which is just a stroke outline, and then one more with a darker shade of gray, just to simulate what a CSS box looks like. And what you've got here, this is a div box, okay, that you'll be working with in uh, Dreamweaver, in your CSS layouts. And you've got the margin, the border, and the padding. So that box on the inside of, of our CSS box is the amount of space between the content and the border, and that's called the margin. You can increase or decrease this to uh, move your content further away or closer to your border. Then the actual outline of the box is what's known as the border itself, and you can make that visible or invisible. And finally, the box on the outside is what's known as padding. So this space can be increased or decreased, and that's the amount of space that appears between the box itself and any other boxes or any other content that appears on your page. So you can simulate this in Illustrator just because you know you're eventually going to be working in CSS and Dreamweaver with this model. So, okay, and the last part we're going to look at is how to make creative reflections for your text and graphics. So if we open up the file reflections.ai and we're going to just see we've got two objects here, a text object and a graphic. I'm going to use the selection arrow to select the text object first of all and then we're going to open up the appearance panel from the windows drop down menu and we're going to add a new fill and then click on the fill color and choose a gradient and what we want to do here is create a, a gradient that goes from black to transparency so um, we can do that just by clicking on the white part of our gradient and then reducing the opacity down to zero which is a really nice feature that's been introduced since CS4. <clears throat> then we can go to effects, distort and transform and then transform and we're going to re uh, reflect, we're going to tick the box reflect Y, make sure that the bottom part of the image is selected here and then click OK so the reflection is going to be displayed underneath the text object. 
At the moment, the text is facing the wrong way, so we need to change the angle to minus 90 degrees, and then reduce the opacity of the black a little to make it blend a bit more into the background. So just click on the black of your gradient and reduce its opacity. So um, we can do the similar effect with the graphic uh, by just making sure that all of our artwork is grouped together and then select the graphic and again choose distort and transform and transform from the effects menu then choose reflect Y make sure it's from the bottom and as we can see in the preview when we do this the original image <clears throat> disappears so we need to um, increase the number of copies up to one so that our reflection is actually a copy of the original and then click OK next we're going to draw a rectangle over the bottom graphic and fill with a gradient um, with full opacity and 90 degrees angle so that the black is fading down to the white we can use a very handy feature in Illustrator now to create what's called an opacity mask so if we click on the word opacity in the properties panel and then choose the flyout menu and select make opacity mask on <clears throat> make sure that you uncheck the clip icon and then click on the mask in the opacity panel and from here you can adjust the gradient of the mask to get the desired effect um, so just mess around with the amount of black and white on the mask to increase or decrease the visibility of your reflection until you get something close to what you're looking for and finally you can actually drag any of these styles uh, into the graphic styles panel so that you can reuse them over and over again rather than having to go through the whole process every time you want to use this effect so if you're going to use a particular effect more than once you can just save it into your graphic styles panel so open up the graphic styles panel and to save a style it's very simple just for example if we click on the text object with the reflection and literally drag it into the graphic styles panel that's how you save it it's going to ask you for a name so we can call this reflection and then it's going to store it there and if you create a new piece of text and then select it and click on the reflection style it will apply that automatically to your image just have a quick look inside the character panel as well um, uh, so we can see some of the different features that you can control about text in Illustrator so obviously you've got the usual font type so which font are you actually using you can scroll through these and preview what they're going to look like you've got the font size so 12 point would be a good size for legibility of body text and then you've got the font color so whatever color you want your font to be in addition to this you've got some extra features such as kerning and letting and line spacing so you can mess around with these three options to get the desired effect like if you're working within a limited amount of space you can increase or decrease the amount of space between the letters of the words and between the words and between the lines uh, the lines between each line of text so it's very useful and very powerful uh, text editing tool um, of course you've also got things like baseline shift um, and, and so on so you can just kind of play around with some of these settings to see what they do and how you could use them in various different situations